gathering of the Spirit, but never encounter the gathering in the Spirit. Because the gathering in the Spirit requires a process. You just don't come into the most holy place dressed any kind of way. You don't tap those kind of rams doing any kind of thing. There is a particular way in and a particular way out. And not only that, the person that must go into this holy place, his garments must match the construction of the temple. Now why would God do that? Why would God design the priestly garment so that it would match the colors of the tabernacle? Why would God do that? He did that to help us to understand that a tabernacle without a priesthood is void. It doesn't make any sense to have a tabernacle and have no priesthood. And it doesn't make any sense for the tabernacle to be doing one thing and the priesthood is doing another. Now that may not sound familiar to you right now, but it will. So the Lord said to me, I'm going to put a stop to people thinking that they can come into my presence any kind of way. And I'm going to put a stop to people thinking that they are in my presence because they are in emotionalism. Because they're in church, because they're in tongues. And I'm finding out, just because you speak in tongues does not mean you have tapped the Holy Spirit. Lord, can I take my time and teach this tonight? Why do I say that? Because the Bible said that demons speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues ain't no big thing no more. Because now everybody is a Christian. Everybody speak in tongues. Everybody can do whatever they want to do. Sing whatever they want to sing. Go where they want to go. Everybody's a Christian. Christianity is popular now. But righteousness is a rarity. Oh God. We're going to go somewhere tonight. We're going to go somewhere tonight. Because the theme says, come up here. Come up here. Whenever you hear God saying, come up here. He's calling us to a place that we've never been before. And now watch this. And if we knew how to get there, I said to myself the other day, I said, God, I said, why don't you, I mean, I wish I could ask somebody this. I wish I could tell somebody. I wish I can, I can get somebody to help me understand this. And he said, that's what the problem is now. Nobody wants to walk the untrodden path. Everybody wants to walk the same pattern that somebody else has walked. But I believe that God is calling us as individuals to now have an individual isolated experience with God. That we would know without your prayer partner, I have touched God. Don't nobody agree with me. I know I got a relationship with God. And don't nobody pat me on my back. I'm already encouraged. And I'm not encouraged because of blind faith. I'm encouraged because I understand the principles of righteousness. I'm encouraged because I don't have to wait for the praise team to tap the ram and to come up here. I don't have to wait for the preacher to preach me there. I don't have to wait till I get to church. I can tap the ram in my kitchen. I can touch God in my basement. I can be in my car on the expressway and the power of God can take me over. I can cast demons out of my own children. I can rebuke the devil out of my own finances. You know, when you start preaching like that, you don't get a whole lot of amens. Because the church is on assistance. The church is not, is not operating isolated. We're on assistance. Everybody is on the bottle. Everybody, everybody is on life support. Oh, Jesus. You take away our favorite preachers and half of us would die. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You let half of the people that we think are our Christian stars fail and we would leave God tomorrow. The church is on fibrillators. But God said, I'm getting the church ready. He said, in the midst of the crowd, there is a remnant. And that remnant ain't stuck on personality. 
Oh, I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. That remnant ain't stuck on a personality. That remnant is stuck on a sound. And they recognize that sound if it comes from the usher. They recognize that sound if it comes from the deacon. They recognize that there is a peculiar sound in the spirit. Maybe that's why a lot of people can't hear the Lord saying, come up here, because they're listening for words. They're listening for the actual words that says, come up here. They're not in tune with the sound. They don't know nothing about a presence that can tug you to a place and you never hear any English being spoken. All you know is that one morning you wake up and you feel something in your spirit telling you, don't move, lay right there. Lay right there. I know you usually spend seven minutes in prayer, but just wait 20 more minutes. Wait 30 more minutes. They got an anointing on them that recognize when it's time to be still in the presence of the Lord. It's an option that they get. So then why can't, why can't the nation hear the unction? Because he said in the second verse, what did he say to Shana? We're going to teach this. What did he say? And you shall make for Aaron your brother uh -huh. sacred garments, uh -huh. appointed official dress, yes. set apart for special holy services, uh -huh. for honor and for beauty. And what does he say? Tell all who are expert, yes. whom I have endowed with skill and good judgment, uh -huh. that they shall make Aaron's garments uh -huh. to sanctify him for my priesthood. It says, and they shall make Aaron's garments to sanctify him from, for watch this, sanctify him for my priesthood. Now this doesn't make any sense, but let me read this to you right quick. There were nine pieces to the sacred garment of the priesthood. Number one, there was the tunic, the trousers, the belt, the robe, the ephod, the waistband, the breast piece, the yum and the thumim and the turban. And somebody said, well this don't really make no sense in a conference because, you know, we didn't really come here to go to Bible school. But I'm going to help you with this. Really, really, it's it's going it's to it's really bless you if you just give me a minute. When he talks about this, he says, there is a wardrobe. Now, the regular priests wore the white tunic. And the high priests wore the white tunic. This is going to make sense in a minute. But the book of Revelations 1 and 13 says what? Turn to it. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Revelation 1, 13 through 14. And in the midst of the lampstands, uh -huh. one like a son of man, uh -huh. clothed with a robe which reached to his feet, yes. and with a girdle of gold about his breast. Uh -huh. His head and his hair uh -huh. were white like white wool, uh -huh. as white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes flashed like a flame of fire. Read it. And his feet glowed like burnished bright bronze, uh -huh. as it is refined in a furnace. Uh -huh. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. Now, it says there was one in the book of Revelations that wore the white robe. And the white robe, and the white robe, the one that wore the white robe, his eyes was like a burning fire. His feet was like bronze. We're talking about Christ here. So we have a description of the person that wears the white robe. Now, what does he say in Revelations 1 and 8? Go. 1, 9 and 8. Matter of fact, go to 19. Go to 19 first. Go to 19 first. Go to 19 first. Read 19 and 8 first. 7 verse. Start at the 7 verse. 19 and 7. Revelations 19 and 7. Let us rejoice and shout for joy. Exalting and triumphant. Are you there yet? Now read it. Let us rejoice and shout for joy. Uh huh. Exalting and triumphant. And let what? Let us celebrate and ascribe to him glory and honor. For what? For the marriage of the Lamb at last has come. Uh huh. And his bride has prepared herself. So he said, watch this. Watch, so, so he said, now, now, now watch this. Read. She has been what? She has been permitted to do what? To dress in fine radiant linen. Okay, now, 
Here it is, he says, that the bride of the Lamb has been prepared. In the book of Revelations 1, you find Jesus Christ being described as one in what? You already got it, brother. As one in white linen. So, in order for him to take unto himself a bride, then he's requiring that the bride match him in identity. So then he says that now that we are the bride of Christ, she has been permitted to wear the white garment. Watch this. Now the Bible also says to us that this white uh, raiment, it represents righteousness to the believer and the servant. Now, because the bride has been permitted to wear the garment, she has not been permitted to wear the garment because she earned the garment. You know, we're not, we're not righteous because we earned our righteousness. The Bible says that righteousness was imputed unto us and we didn't have to pay for it. Now, why would God allow us now or require that we now become adorned in righteousness that's supposed to look like a white garment? Because the Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to many people. The Bible also said that if you want me to fight your battles, because a lot of us are saying, oh, we're in spiritual warfare. We're in spiritual warfare. But the Lord began to let me know that there is a place that is in the spirit realm where there is no more warfare. He said... That in the outer court when we're dressing ourselves, in the outer court when you're washing, that's fine, when you're sacrificing. But when the high priest, thank you Jesus, took the blood of the lamb and walked into the most holy place, completely dressed from head to toe. When he walked in that ram, there was no Satan in that ram. When he walked in front of the Ark of the Covenant, there was no demons in that realm. When he walked into the Ark of the Covenant, he didn't have to go in begging and pleading. He went in to get the answer for the people. And the Bible said, is there no remedy for the sin and the degradation that is in our nation? Yes, there's a remedy. He said, I'm calling for a remnant to get yourself dressed and get yourself washed so you may be able to go into the most holy place and come out with the answer we're in a seating but we're not gathering the answer we're tapping rams but we're not getting to the answer why because there are some things that have yet to be revealed my God, when you're in the most holy place and you're looking in there and you're sitting in that place, you're not seeing things the way people see them from the out court. Let me tell you why. Because the Bible says this, that this righteousness was imputed in the book of Romans 4 and 22. It was imputed unto us righteousness. We didn't buy it. We didn't earn it. We didn't pay for it. Well, let's look at what the word imputed means because the bible said there was a generation that arose that did not know the lord and, and, and maybe and maybe that's the reason why we got people that can oh god that can that can be on fire in the sanctuary but when they leave home and they get back to their house that same power is not there Maybe that's the reason why we can have the faith that we need while we're standing here. If I want to start prophesying right now, you can grab a hold of that faith until you get back to your living room and your kitchen and your situation. Then all of a sudden, where did my faith go? Why is it that I don't feel the power of God? But my brothers and my sisters, I'm finding out that the greatest anointing that you can ever experience is the one with you and God alone. Listen, this, this, this thing that happens in the sanctuary is temporary. This thing that happens in the sanctuary is us not forgetting to assemble ourselves. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about church relationship right now. I'm talking about power with God by yourself. 
because let me make an announcement you're not going to always have your prayer partner you're not going to always be able to pick up the phone and call somebody and say will you pray with me but you got to understand the kind of power that you have been given as a believer let me show you some let me show you some when this when this bible says that righteousness was imputed unto us i took the pleasure of looking up the word imputed what does that mean the word imputed the word imputed means inclusion into a space or a place or a limit inclusion in other words Christ was sitting on the right hand of the Father in other words Christ and God is one and you was left out there to die and when he laid this righteousness on you he gave you permission now to be included in the authority so now you're no longer sitting on the outside praying to God you're sitting in God and praying the answer in other words I used to be confused about what it is God was going to do I used to didn't know how my circumstance was going to work out I used to didn't think that in the midst of my trouble that I would ever come out of it but ever since I have received this imputed righteousness I'm able to see stuff I've never seen before because I have been included I'm not locked out I'm on the inside now I got the devil running from me God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Now the devil is not chasing me down. But I'm standing still and watching the enemy flee from me. So he says here. Are you there? Are you there? How many there? How many there? I'm talking about authority from another place. How many there? I'm talking about coming to another realm. Are you there? I'm talking about getting out of the prayer line and getting into the demon chasing line. Are you there? I'm talking about walking back in your house and rebuking every demon and every devil out of your house, out of your family, out of your marriage. Are you there? What am I saying? This hour, this next Power is for more than just mere Christians. Okay, I didn't say nothing right there. Maybe I'm gonna get 10 people to say amen. I just need 10 people to say amen. This next hour is for more than just mere Christians. Now, why do I say that? Because if imputed righteousness means that I was included, now watch this. The word imputed also means it means transition in motion or direction from the outside to the inside now this this bear with me here watch this watch this watch this watch this imputed means motion imputed means motion that means i'm not a believer and i'm standing still that's why people don't understand how you can end up with 5,000 in the school last year and 10,000 the next year. Because when you begin to operate in your righteousness, you move. You don't stay still. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Your business multiplies. Your church multiplies. Your ministry multiplies. And if you're standing still and you can't see any movement, you're in religion. You're not in righteousness. Because righteousness causes you to move and shift. Everything you touch changes. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. You can't even go to church and sit down next to a person that's really righteous. How did Shanda? Because something in your belly will start moving and jumping. Have you ever gotten the company of somebody that's righteous and all of a sudden you feel like you can jump through a troop and leap over a wall? You know why? Because righteousness causes movement. Right there, there. 
Amen. Pastor, that's why I look at people sometimes. Thank you, Lord. I look at people sometimes in the body of Christ, and it takes the praise team two hours to get them off of their seat. I watch how the praise team sing themselves almost out of a voice, trying to get people to worship. Because you know what? You can't move that religion with the spirit. My God, my God, my God. When you're the righteous, you hear a righteous sound. Anything with the name of Jesus in it, it makes your belly jump. Anything with the name of God in it, it causes your hand to go up. Nobody has to tell you to lift your hands, to clap your hands, to stop your feet. My righteousness, it causes movement in my spirit. Touch your neighbor and say, look out, because I'm going to move tonight. I said, touch your neighbor and say, look out. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. You sitting next to the righteous. And I'm tired of sitting still. Come on, somebody bless him. See, let me help you right there. Sit down, let me help you right there. Let me help you right there. Some of y'all just, you know, looking because, because a young lady ran up here and everybody couldn't hardly get their praise on right there from watching her. But you know what? That's what, I don't know, that's what the real anointing to do. Hey, if it's the righteous, it'll make you run. And if it's a demon, it'll make you run to the altar. You don't hear what I'm saying to y'all. Whoa, my God. I've never seen a people in this last hour that instead of casting demons out, we take them out the church. Because you know why? We're not righteous. Because the righteous isn't afraid of a battle. Because the righteous recognize that the battle has already been fought. The victory is won. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal. Y'all sit down because I think y'all want to have church. I think y'all want to have church. I ain't figured it out yet. I think I see about 30 people in here that's ready to get this. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Roll representing righteousness, Pastor. Watch this. It says here that imputed means to ascribe, to ascribe, to announce, to pronounce guilt. All right. Now this is the Webster dictionary said that guilt or righteousness to a person vicariously. Okay. In other words, what I now operate in, I got it vicariously. Now, I thought I knew, brother organist, what the word vicarious meant until I looked this up. Now. The dictionary said that vicarious means a performed, or to, to perform or received, uh, a performed, received, or suffered in the place of another. Okay, that makes sense to us because we know Jesus died for our sins. Watch this. It says, felt or enjoyed through imagined participation in the experience of others. So I had to lay down on that one. I said, what do you tell? Performed or experienced through the imagined participation of another. Performed or experienced through the imagined participation of another. So then what he's saying is this, that Jesus, thank you Lord, when he got ready to go to the cross, honey, he looked out and saw everything that you would ever do. Thank you Lord. And he stepped in your life and he lived your whole life out between the third and the ninth hour. What took you 47 years to live, or 30 years to live, however age you are, he did it in hours. And he said, wait a minute, I'm going to take on Dr. Shimalowo's sins, and I'm going to live as him 
for a few hours and I'm going to die on the cross and I'm going to die the same death and judgment that he would have gotten but I'm not going to stop there now that he's dead stand up doctor stand up pastor now that he's dead he's lifeless there's nothing there God said that ain't fair now what I'm going to do I'm going to take my life and I'm going to step in him and I'm going to let him become me for the rest of his life did you just hear that did you just hear that now you are living vicariously as Jesus Christ that's why the devil can't wipe you out good God have mercy that's why whatever the devil throw in your direction it ain't gonna work because when Satan looks at you he don't see you he sees somebody that you are living their life that's why the Bible says it's no longer I but it's the Christ that liveth in me if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all things are passed away Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait, 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 did you get that, did you get that, so, so, so now, now pastor, now, God looks out, and every time we make a mistake, an error, because we don't have knowledge of our righteousness, God is supposed to look at you and destroy you. But what happens is, thank you, Lord. It, it, there, there's this, there's this liquid. You know, when, when, when I was in the hospital, and, and they didn't know what was wrong with my lungs, they shot this liquid in my lungs, and they put me inside of an EMI machine, an ER, the, the MRI machines, and the MRI was able to light up. The problem area. Lord have mercy Jesus. So. When we make a mistake. The blood of Jesus. It covers us. So when God takes a look at us. What begins to illuminate. Out of us is Christ. And he looks at Christ. And says I can't, I can't do that. Because my son came back twice. Once he died. I said he shall forever live. So now you know what. I got to forgive you. I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta treat you. Just like I treat my son. And instead of making you condemn. I've adopted you in the royal family. Now you can walk like my son. You can cast out devils like my son. You can raise the dead like my son. You can open up blind eyes. You can cause men to walk. Why? Because it's not Dr. Shimalowo. It's Christ. It's Christ moving. It's Christ operating. It's Christ anointing. It's Christ baptizing. It's Christ. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait, I'm gonna say something right here. So, so when the when the Bible said, "To much is given, much is required." When God looks at us and says, "Be ye holy, for I am holy," and here we go. I can't. Oh, I just got a problem. Oh, I keep messing up. Can I just make a real cold, it's going to sound like it's a cold statement. But do you not realize, Pastor, I believe this, that 75% of the body of Christ have never been truly converted. Because true conversions give you a different appetite. You don't hear me, you don't hear me, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. When Christ come into your life, you begin to take on the same appetite he takes on. What he hates, you hate. What he loves, you love. I'm not here nobody. You see, the, the, the reason why I know that we have not really been converted because there's too much babysitting going on. It's too much thumb sucking going on. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. 
By now, you ought to be walking on your own. By now, you ought to be casting out demons. By now, the devil ought to be running from you. When Jesus walked out, demons ran up to him and said, Why are you tormenting us? Are you hearing what God is saying? The Bible said that the righteous, they wage war and they judge. The righteous are not picked on. The righteous are not wimps because the Bible said that the people of God suffered violence. But the righteous become violent and they take it by force. Y'all, 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 sit down because I'm preaching too hard. I'm preaching too hard. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Why, 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 why. Wait, 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 wait. He, he started talking to me about this righteous thing. About the righteous. He said, he said, he said, he said, do you know what? I can say to you, Dr. Canole, go and lay hands on that man with cancer. And the minute you touch him, cancer is supposed to dry up. Okay, I'm not getting nobody to say that. I'm not getting nobody to talk back to me. Oh, Jesus. You know, that sign is something else. Rise to a near dimension. That, 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 that right there is deep. Rise to a new dimension. It ain't supposed to be. Satan, come on now. Devil, what did I say? Satan, you heard me now. It's supposed to be a one-time prayer. And you're supposed to do like they do on the television commercial. Like they do with the, with the other make oven. You're supposed to set it and forget it. Y'all ain't hear me. You're supposed to speak it. Too many of us are still in the asking category. But I'm going to live. I don't know about y'all. But I'm on my way to the category that says that if I decree a thing, that God shall bring it to pass. You don't hear what I'm saying. I'm on my way to a level uh, where the Bible said that God said command ye me that when I speak it uh, that I got power with God uh, because of my righteousness to speak those things would be not as though they okay 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 let me help you let me help you let me help you a few years ago, a few years ago, you were going through a mighty test. My, my prayer group was praying for you. And I was praying for you one morning in our morning prayer. And the Holy Ghost said to me, he stopped me dead in my tracks. I mean, I was on the wall for you, Pastor. I was praying. He said, you need not pray for the righteous. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, because my word says that the righteous don't need an intercessor. Because when the righteous cry, I will deliver them out of all of their trouble. He said, why? Why do I have the ability? Why do I make the statement that when the righteous cry, I shall deliver them out of all of their struggles? Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm just out there. He said, because the righteous has a built-in intercessor. They don't need an outside prayer partner. They got something on the inside that is forever and ever and ever and ever making intercession for them. See, you ain't got, you ain't got to be tripped out when stuff happened and somebody said to you, honey, I just feel sorry for you. You can say to them, Oh, I'm all right. 
Because somebody's praying for me. Oh, I'll be all right. Because somebody's praying for me. Oh, I'm going to come out of this because somebody is making intercession for me. Oh, you ain't got to worry about me because somebody is praying for me without ceasing. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 let me help you with something. Let me help you with something. He said, he said, When the high priest, let me show you something. When they go into the holies of holies for the atonement of the people, they're not in there running their mouth. They walk in there with the blood sacrifice. Pastor, this may go over some people's head. But they go into the holies of holies already carrying the blood of what they have sacrificed in their life and put on the altar. They don't go in the deep place coming to the altar. They go to the altar first. Kill the flesh. Sacrifice the flesh. Sacrifice their flesh that desires. They sacrifice all the stuff that the devil once told them that they couldn't put down and could never stop. They make a decision to sacrifice and tell the devil, I'm not going to do that. And the reason why you are supposed to deny the enemy and tell the devil that you're not going to do that is because you don't want to be denied access to the most holy place. Now, I'm going to have to help y'all with that and just, I'm going to have to break that down for you. I ran into a problem before I came here because I had a, I had a passport, and a lot of y'all didn't know it, but over a few days ago, I, I, always, I almost wasn't going to be here, because I took my passport, and I thought that it said one year, and I destroyed my passport, and when they asked me where it was, I said, oh, I, I think I threw that thing away. They said, well, well that, that, was, that was a 10-year passport. They said, well, if you done threw it away, you can't, you can't go to London. And I was like, all right, well, wait, 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 wait. Well, go down there and get me another passport. So I, I sent my workers down there to the passport building. And she went down there, poor thing, mad. She just, and they were telling her she can't have no passport. We can't give her no passport. We need her to come. And we ain't going to give you one no way. We ain't got no no appointments. You can't get this for another week. So I got up the next morning, 6.30 in the morning. I went down to the passport place. I got there, Pastor, 7.30. Got to the window. The ladies at the window, they, they had took their mean pill for the day. <laughs> and the lady said, what do you want? I said, I came to get a passport. Go to the wall, to the phone. I said, well, ma'am, I'm trying to get an appointment. Go to the wall, ma'am. So I go to the wall. I dial the phone. They gave me a one o'clock appointment. I said, that's going to be too late. I can't take that appointment. So I went back. I said, ma'am, I need another appointment. We don't have no more appointments. I said, I got to have an appointment. She said, ma'am, go to the wall. I went back to the wall. I dialed the wall. They gave me an 11 o'clock appointment. So what I did was I stayed at the, at the place. Then I turned around, they said, you need a signature from the post office. I get to the post office at 9 o'clock. Post office said, we don't open to 10. So I had to go all the way back to the passport place. I said, well, you know what? I won't do the passport for the, at the post office. I'll go right here at the window. So I stood in the line for about 30 minutes because my appointment was at 11. I get to the window. It's 1030. The lady said, may I help you? I said, I'm here for my appointment. She said, what time is it? I said, it's 11 o'clock. The line was long. She said, come back in 45 minutes. So I had to get out the line, go back past and get to the back of the line that I just stood in. I came back to the line. I got to the window again, sister. She said, what time is your appointment? I said, 11 o'clock. She said, you got five minutes. Get out of the line. I had to get out of the line. I said, God have mercy. I got out of the line. I went back. I stood, got back in the line. She gave me my number. I get upstairs. 
to where they giving the passports out. They give me number 289 and they just started on number 2666. So I had to sit and wait and wait and wait. And wait until they call my number. And you know what hit my spirit? I said, this is just what people do in the church. They cut up their righteousness because they don't know the value of what they got until it's time to get into another country. And then you don't have access because you ain't got a passport. And that's what's wrong with the body of Christ. We're jumping and shouting, but we done cut up our righteousness. And now we don't have a passport to get to the new dimension. But you know what I did? I promised myself in Jesus. I'm going to hold on to this passport. I ain't going to let it out of my sight. Because you know what? The reason why we so quick to give up on God. Because we ain't paid nothing for it. But if you can remember the days that you fasted. If you can remember the nights that you prayed. You won't be so quick to let the devil cheat you. By making you do something stupid. That you may lose your passport. I'm going to say one more thing and I'm quitting. I'm going to say one more thing and I'm quitting about this. I said, God, I said, you talking about, you talking about the righteous. Well, why are you saying this to me? He said, because only the righteous has access to the new dimension. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna show you. You think God ain't studying wardrobe? Why do you think he told us in the book of Ephesians? Put on the whole arm of God. First thing he tell you about is the belt of truth and righteousness. I said, God, I said, what are you saying here? He said, because you know what? We will be forever praying for things and not changing anything. As long as we don't think that clean is a prerequisite. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I don't know why I can't get no amens right there. Did everybody just walk out of here or something or did y'all get me mixed up with somebody else? Did y'all get me mixed up with somebody else? Because, okay. All right, all right, I'm going to say this, and I'm just, I'm just going to go home right here. I'm going to go home right here. I'm going on back to America right now, because... Because we are so... This generation is so used to... This is what God said to me. When he began to challenge me with this, he began to say to me, do you not know that this generation is so used to the weak version of the gospel? They live on the mercy and the grace side. Never having any accountability to the righteousness. Never understanding that they must be responsible for what they hear in their ears. Never become responsible to the fact that you got to walk this walk. That you got to stop calling yourself a Christian. And you a liar and a fornicator and a cheater. And you a lesbian and a homosexual. And you still practice all of that stuff. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing in here. There's got to be a change in what we call holiness. Because the Bible said we've got to come to a place that we put a difference between clean and unclean and holy and unholy. And it doesn't all go together. Okay, let me help you so I can leave. Because I came as a prophet this time. So I'm prophesying right now. I'm prophesying right now. While I'm preaching, I'm prophesying. We are the outer court generation. We're the outer court generation. I learned about prayer through this man. I learned how to tap prayer by listening to all of his tapes. No, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You know, sometimes people can say stuff and they write in your face. And you miss the whole concept of what they're trying to say. But you know what I did? I learned something. I 
understand now why anything goes. Why people can just, you know, sing all the suck me up and lick me down songs and, and get up and say, I thank the Lord. Because he just, for being a Christian, I just thank God. I understand now why people can take their clothes off and still say, and I thank God for being a Christian. I understand now how people right here in this audience got more secular tapes in their car right now than they do Christian tapes. Okay, I'm not going to get nobody to go with me because I'm going to... Now understand why we can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can look like prostitutes almost and, and still talk about what God just loved me. It's just in my heart. It don't matter what I got on. It's just all in my heart. It ain't in your heart, baby. Because the Bible said out of the abundance of the, of, the, of the heart, the mouth speaks. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. Whatever it is your heart is full of becomes a manifestation on the outside. I don't think y'all hear me right now. I just want some real sanctified people that really love God to say amen. The rest of y'all ain't got to say nothing. Because number one, why is it that everything goes now? Because the church is stuck in the outer court always washing at the laver every message we can't hardly give you no divine revelation because we always trying to clean you up I'm looking for something right here that I wrote down. Because y'all don't believe me. Y'all just think I'm just... Pastor, they just think I'm just talking. And you know what I'm finding out the saddest thing about it is? Ever since God has put me on this journey about righteousness... Some of the same people that used to say, oh, there she go on television. Oh, they go one eat the bottom. Now they're looking at you like you're crazy. Like, that ain't the same lady. Because the book of Ezekiel said, as a prophet, I'm sending you into the temple. And the book of Ezekiel said, there's a hole in the wall. Put your hand in the hole and open up the door. Because there's a door behind the wall in the temple. And he said, when I opened up the door and went in, and I got in, I saw the elders and the priests worshiping idols and all kind of abominable things behind closed doors. And they said to themselves, the Bible quote this, nobody sees us. They don't even know that we're here. And God said, the devil is a liar. Somebody does see you. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the proof. That righteousness is on the uprise. Because every hypocrite, no prayers would be answered. Every lying spirit, no prayers would be answered. Every gossiping tongue, no prayers will be answered. The Bible said that you will pray and I will turn my face away from you. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. I don't care how many hours you spend in prayer. You better clean it up. I don't care how many long times you pass. You better get your life clean up. Because God said, I will not hear you. Just, just, let me say this, let me say this. Some of y'all are saying this to me right now. 
Well, I remember when I prayed about da 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 da, and the Lord answered me. And I went to the Lord with that. And the Lord said to me, Juanita, that's called a moment of righteousness. He said, that is when a person cleans up for a moment. That is when a person hits a place where out of desperation, they get on their face and they say, God, whatever, oh God, just wash me my muscles, whatever I did wrong. God, just clean me, just help me. But I just need you to save my boy off a crack. And in a moment of righteousness, I hear them. And he said, can you imagine what would happen to the church if the whole body of Christ took a bath? Can you, y'all ain't going to say nothing. Can you imagine what would happen in your house and what the Lord began to reveal to me when I got on this journey? He said, do you know where the 24-hour miracle is? He said, many people are asking me for miracles. He said, but the 24-hour miracle is granted in righteousness. He said, do you not know that a person tonight can make up in their mind that I'm turning my back on sin and I'm standing for righteousness? And he said, in less than in 24 hours no demon that is holding their finances can keep on holding the devil gotta take his hands off of your family off of your I don't mean tomorrow I mean tonight okay I didn't get nobody I didn't get nobody to rejoice right there I didn't get nobody I didn't get nobody to rejoice right there because we have not yet experienced the new dimension. Okay. Let me describe that to you. A dimension is not a travel. It didn't say the new journey, where it takes you days to get there. A dimension is a line in the spirit realm that you just cross into. Okay. A dimension ain't nothing that you fast for. Watch this. The new dimension is nothing that you have to go on long days of consecration for. The new dimension is a decision. Now, I just said something right there. 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 Listen, listen. A new dimension is a decision. What decision? A decision to call everything that's a lie, a lie. Because truth cannot be revealed to you concerning your family until you denounce every lie that the devil has ever told you. Y'all ain't saying amen right there, but I wish you would. Every demon that lied to you and told you you wasn't going to never be nothing, you got to denounce it. Every demon that ever said that God can never use you because of your past, you got to denounce it. Every demon that told you that your family was going to die on crack, you got to denounce it. Every devil that told you that your body wasn't going to be healed from AIDS, you got to call it a liar. And the minute you denounce the devil, you step into a new dimension. You know what? You know what? I'm going to say this and I got to quit. Ephesians 6 said, say about that. 